All right, I'm working on this uh, 95 Honda Prelude SI right here on the windshield wiper blades. Uh, I'm changing out the bushing, you know, that makes the wiper arm bounce around. But I'm going to show you all how to take his crowl off without breaking it. Look, top of your crowl up here, you have a very thin piece of plastic right here on the edge. Okay, now this is actually rubber. It looks like plastic, but you can see it's rubber. It's bendable. So what you got to do... It's basically like what you want to do is lift up on the back of it back here and try to work these corners loose right here because they're rubber and slide them past the hood like I got it and then you're gonna you know slide it out backwards up and over the windshield because it's got this real thin piece of plastic right here that can break off now when I pop these front fasteners out, the ones on the very end right here on both sides, they broke off. They're actually cock what I call cockeyed there instead of straight down. They were crooked like that. So as you're prying them out, they, they break. But anyways, the rest of them in the middle didn't break off. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, um, i got to work on this sucker here. And, you know. But, uh, you know, basically this, this sucker was on there and I just slid it backwards that direction. And I had to move this sucker right here to get him to clear, you know, a corner of the hood right up in here. But, yeah, you want it to go back over the windshield. You don't want it to come forward. If you make this crowl come forward, you're going to break these corners right here. That's, that's like a half inch plastic. It's real thin. But, uh, yeah, they don't make, you can actually buy a new fiberglass, uh, crowl like this. Somebody makes one online, it's all fiber, uh, not fiberglass, carbon fiber. It looks real sweet. Probably look awesome with a hood. Anyways, let me get back to this. Alright, yeah, I got the crowl, uh, got this big old crowl thing off. Let's see, let's see how the other corners are thin. Came out through the top. What I had to do is, uh, instead of just going straight up with it, I had to lift one side. I lifted the driver's side and turned it at an angle, and then it slid out. You gotta kinda turn it at a 45 degree angle and slide it back over the windshield. And it helps to have a friend help you, get someone to hold the hood so they can move the hood backwards and forwards to kinda like, you know, keep it from yeah, move the hood back. Like I was holding the hood with one hand and holding that thing with the other hand. So you got to move the hood forwards and backwards, kind of like move it to like give you enough gappage under there to slide it. And it kind of helps if someone else is holding the hood. So, anyways, next thing is uh, this is pretty much set up just like an Accord. It probably uses the same parts. All right, so yeah, this linkage is bad right here. Watching. Uh, that sucker so it feels like it's this bottom bushing the one, you can't see it it's, it's down there it's that that bushing right there see that's the bad bushing I don't know. I'm sure if I take it off, there'll probably be more. But yeah, next up, I unplug it right here. Unplug your battery first, though. It's always good to like disconnect your battery. What I like to do when I have my battery disconnected when I'm working on a car, I like to put a battery charger on it. That way, I'm doing two things at once: getting your battery fully charged. You know, while you're sitting there, and you got it unplugged, working on something. Then when you reconnect it, it's all fully charged. Yeah, I'm probably going to disconnect battery, stick a charger on it, and then pull that uh, connector right there. Then bound bolt it and pull it out. But uh, yeah, the hardest thing is like trying to figure out how to pull off this crowl without breaking it because these cars are so old. What is the '95, 2020, 25 year old piece of plastic there? 
they make this piece like in uh, carbon fiber online. Somebody does. Looks pretty sweet. This car is kind of like a beater, like a daily beater. It's got 160,000 miles on it. Anyways, these top ones right here, they're real easy to undo. All it is is uh, the screw top. What you want to do is you want to unscrew the screws on the fastener and then unscrew it all the way and pull it out. Then after you pull the center part out, you want to stick your tool underneath it and pry it up. And you want to do it like this so you don't strip the threads on those little screws on those fasteners. And then when you put it back together the same way, you pop the big piece in first and then you stick your uh, screw in there. This thing right here. But yeah, you want to pop the big piece in first and then stick the screw in by hand and twist it in. And the same way you remove it the same way. You want to unscrew it first and then pry it out. That way you don't tear up the threads on them. That way you can reuse them. But I didn't tear up none of the top ones. None of the top fasteners. I only broke the side ones right here. For some reason they broke on both sides. And then the center ones, I still got those. But I sell them at parts store. That's actually air box going to your, you get your air conditioner. That's how you get leaves. You know how your leaves get inside your blower box? They go in through this thing right here. I gotta get this sucker running. When I get this car running, it's gonna be for sale. But if anybody's watching my channel, they can buy it if they want to. I already put a thousand dollars into the engine replacing new fuel filter right there you can see the nuts are all new and clean but yeah that's new uh, ignition coils new right here uh, distributors new There's something else over there starters new batteries new uh, alternators new uh, what else is down there New spark plugs. I cleaned out the fuel tank. I drained it and put new fuel in it, and uh, did all that before I put a new filter on it. But yeah, just getting a rebuilt uh, alternator, starter, distributor, ignition coil. I think all that's like around a thousand bucks. Oh, and a battery. Battery is like a hundred bucks. Uh. Anyways. Yeah, got my battery charging. It was pretty dead. All right, um, there's three bolts on this prelude. There's one here, two over there. Anyways, take the car apart, you'll find them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's one right there. There's another one that goes right here. They're 12 millimeter. Now, when you take this sucker off, this whole assembly, what I'll say, you want to pull it, you want to pull it this direction, okay? See, these little things down here, you can just lift up on, on that end, and it, it moves. But this end down here, this little knob goes inside this right here. So, since this little thing, fastener goes in here, which is basically your fourth bolt hole, but there's no bolt or nut. You can go and slide it, you know, toward the passenger side. And once you slide that, this fastener out here, should be able to pull the whole thing out. And yeah, and I got the wiring connector I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty easy. Yeah, it turned out this, this sucker right here was like popped off the, uh, yeah pushing thing wasn't even there and then this one right here I took him off like taking the parts to where to match him up but uh he was actually broken too but this one right here was like gone there's no cap to it it's completely popped off and gone this one right here it was just like broken but 
The other two are good. Yeah, you should never replace uh, that whole window unit unless the motor goes bad on it. You know, if this electronic thing goes bad, then that's when you want to replace the whole thing. But as long as it's, you know, the motor works on it, then, you know, you want to do what I'm doing, replace the bushings or the, the arm. Oh, yeah. And when you pull it out, this wire is going to be in the way. You got to bend this wire and kind of like tuck it under underneath uh, the motor assembly so that you can lift up on this side and pull it up and out. But if you don't tuck that wire under it, it's pretty much not coming out. I gotta clean all that crap up, but I'm fixing to go to the parts store, give me a new bushing. So I'm gonna take a wet rag, clean all that up, wait for my battery to charge, and uh, put it all back together. This is a 95 uh, Prelude SI. H. It's a H23, but I put a I don't know if y'all see that, but golly, can't hardly see it. It says H23A3. See the A3 at the end? It's kind of hard to see, but nothing special. Alright, got her all cleaned up, I just used a, you know, soapy sponge, there's actually a, it's kind of hard to see, there's actually a drain right down through here for the water, for when water gets in it, so you can go ahead and wash it out and watch it drain out, right there, it's this little porthole yeah it drains out of there and then there's one on the other side too so yeah you can pour water in it and wash it out All right. got this sucker fixed got new uh, little bushings on it guess I ought to show you what kind of bushings I used Bought some little brake grease to put on it. Uh, let's see which machines these are. Yeah, they look the good ones. Anyways, they're Dorman. This is General Motors. part number on it but let me try to see that's a Nissan bushing that's not what I used yeah there we go see that little white bushing that's what I used it looks almost like the OEM it's like rounded off on the tip that's the one I used it says General Motors Next, I'm going to paint these wiper blades. Paint those tomorrow. But yeah, this sucker's ready to go in. And I can put my crowl back on. Bought some new fasteners. But, uh, that's pretty much it. I think I got these windshield wiper blades fixed here. A lot of adjustment to them. One of the things I want to point out is this little rubber seal right here on the actual blade. If you look, it kind of has like a little tab. A little tab where it kind of like uh, connects or sticks in or whatever you want to call it right there. Anyways, you see how this side right here doesn't stick out as far this side right here sticks out further so anyways 
So what I'm saying, the shorter end, you want to want it uh, pointed towards the passenger side. And this is why on the passenger side, when I put these things on, this rubber thing was actually touching this over here. I couldn't figure it out because you can see how this sticks out further. Anyways, I just slide these rubber things off and flip them around reverse. Anyways, as far as the arms right here, I had to adjust those where they don't touch the hood. I think I got this passenger side arm as far down as it'll go without touching the hood. It's not touching, it's not touching here in the corner. But most, mo more important, I, I wanted to clear the hood when I, when I lift the wiper arm. Like this right here. That's it. Right there, that gappage, it clears. So it goes all the way up. Might be kind of hard to see, but yeah, I got I got some gappage there. Yeah, I replaced these bushings on this uh, wiper arm motor mechanism, and uh, repainted the wiper arms, replaced the wiper blades. And I'll fix and get it inspected and registered so I can drive it. So I was basically, you know, wanting my wipers to work, but the paint that I bought, the spray paint I bought to paint these uh, wipers was kind of like a high gloss black, and I really don't like that. Uh, it's all I could get because of this COVID-19 crap. It wasn't, but you can see how, here in the light right here, you can see how it's kind of hazy right there. Anyways, it doesn't have the perfect surface finish. It's kind of hard to paint with, too. It sprays real thin. You got to put several layers on there to build it up. But, uh, yeah, I would rather have like kind of like a flat black uh, trim paint instead of like a high gloss. You can see how all that's shining right there. But you can kind of see the spray mist, too. But... Anyways, I just don't like the finish. I wish it was like a low gloss. But other than that, everything looks like it's straight. Yep, yep. Now I gotta test them out, turn them on. And uh, whenever you put these uh, wiper arms on, you adjust them. The most important thing is to uh, make sure on the passenger side it's not hitting down here anywhere. I mean, you don't want it hitting this down here and you don't want it touching this here as long as you're not and then you also don't want it you know scraping the hood whenever you lift it so basically the passenger side when you're adjusting you basically want to get them as low as you can without them hitting or touching anything and then on the passenger I'm mean, at the driver's side here what you got to worry about is the it, the wiper arm slapping right up here on the windshield okay because like if you have this wiper arm adjusted too high it's going to be hitting right here so one of the best ways to adjust the driver's side wiper arm is to stop the car with the wiper arm pointed straight up like that and if you can get it to stop to where it stop to where it, it, it you know it, it moves as far as it can this direction then you can uh, adjust your wiper arm to where it'll point straight up because you just want it going straight up like level with the side of the windshield if you can. But uh, but yeah, the driver's side, you got to worry about it hitting up top. Passenger side, you got to worry about it hitting low. And that's pretty much it. And then make sure they clear the hood. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much the way it's supposed to be. And uh, let me see. Besides all that, let me show you inside here. Here we go. So I got this nice black interior, all black leather, black leather seats in the back, headliners, some kind of leather bottle, gray, kind of like a grayish leather bottle. Uh, everything's like wrapped in black leather. Manual transmission. 
just got through taking my cages apart and cleaning them. There's not any dust inside them or anything. It's not supposed to be. Cleaning the best I could.